Secretary of Transportation and Debate Powerhouse Pete Buttigieg testified before House Republicans yesterday and sparred with them on a number of issues ranging from climate change to electric vehicles to his own travel habits. And many of these moments went viral, and we need to take a look at them. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. Maybe check out my Patreon. I'd appreciate the support. All right, folks. So again, first things first, uh, I, I, there's so much to unpack here. Uh, Pete Buttigieg testified before a congressional committee. So did Attorney General Merrick Garland. And I was actually out yesterday because I tested positive for COVID. So this is going to be a rather long video that I might have otherwise broken up into separate videos. But there are multiple clips I want to play of this congressional testimony between Secretary Pete Buttigieg and House Republicans. One of the things that I love, and I try to encourage in my own small way from this very small channel, which will hopefully grow, and I'm sure you all appreciate as well, is that even though Democrats are unquestionably, incontrovertibly, the more responsible and superior governing party, one of the things they are less effective at generally, and I think because they just choose to be this way for whatever reason, is they allow Republicans to dictate the terms of both broad messaging engagement and also very often interpersonal conversation. If you look at members of the Biden administration who appear before congressional testimony, when Republicans are frothing at the mouth and getting combative, um, Democrats are usually like they're very demure and sometimes they even come off meek. And I feel like there is a way to push back to not allow bad faith Republicans to dictate the terms of the conversation while also not being, you know, completely petulant in return. Pete Buttigieg in these clips, I think, has found that sweet spot. So we've got three clips I want to play because they went viral and they cover a range of issues. The first one is climate change here. Uh, Pete Buttigieg, Secretary Buttigieg, spars with a Republican about climate change, and uh, you just need to hear it for yourselves. Those Nobody wants these electric vehicles unless you're an elite that can afford them. People in my district sure as hell don't want them. So keep going. Why are we doing this? Is it over CO2? Yeah, we're doing it for three reasons. Even though the EV revolution is going to happen anyway. Oh, I think it's that's a revolution like, caused I, I would love to be able to answer your question, Congressman. Yeah, okay. Even though we think that transition is happening in the automotive sector no matter what, there are three things that we think are not guaranteed. Will it happen quickly enough to materially help with climate change? Will it happen on equitable terms that are available to people who aren't wealthy and okay, might I'm not be able to? short on time. So if I could just please finish my answer. Let's drill on the climate change. Just finish on the third. Uh, Will it be made on, on American soil It's about CO2, isn't it? How's what that? Percent, what percent of the atmosphere is CO2 that we're chasing here? I'm sorry? What percent of the atmosphere is CO2 that we're chasing here? Because you're talking about climate change. I, I don't know the percentage of atmospheric gases. You don't know the percent of the atmosphere. What I can tell CO2. you is that climate change is real. We've got to do something about it. Yeah, this one's and called autumn, been... sir. So I'm sorry? This one's called autumn right now, so yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't make out what you said, sir. This climate change right now is called autumn, yes. Yeah, that's, that's the seasons changing, which mm -hmm. respectively is not the same thing as the climate changing. Okay, what a moment. Okay, so first things first, please note that Secretary Buttigieg, you know, they're referring to, you know, the need for electric vehicles. And Secretary Buttigieg points out that the electric vehicle industry is coming, whether, you know, climate deniers and, you know, fossil fuel sympathizers want it or not, it's coming. And so he, he, he gave off his three reasons. Note that when the Republican congressman, LaMalfa, tried to interrupt uh, Secretary Buttigieg, Secretary Buttigieg didn't shout, but he didn't stop talking. He's like, no, I'd like to, uh, you asked me a question, I'm going to finish answering the question, if I may. And he just does it anyway. Now, some people might say, well, he should have, you know, because you have two people talking at the same time. I think it's important to do that, to make the point that if you ask me a question and I am answering substantively, you're not going to interrupt me and throw me off. Pete Buttigieg, what he did there repeatedly was refuse to allow the Republican congressman to dictate the terms of the conversation without, in turn, being a jerk himself. He's found that sweet spot. But also note the very end how the, the Republican congressman, LaMalfa, thought that he was going for the dunk. He's like, yeah, climate change is real. This one's called autumn. And I'm not, I don't know if this is true, but I bet that this is the case, that Buttigieg, I think, heard him clearly. Maybe the first time was kind of like, well, wait a minute, what'd you say? But then when he asked him to repeatedly answer, part of me thinks that Buttigieg did it on purpose because he knew the moment would go viral. I'm sorry, say it again, that you think climate change is when seasons change right, even though the two have nothing to do with each other, right? 
he was correct to point it. And note even his tone of voice. He didn't call the guy an idiot, but note how he like tucked his head and spoke very slowly as if speaking to an idiot. That's the sort of condescension that these Republicans deserve. And I think, again, maybe I'm wrong. I actually speak on behalf, or, or I am part, I, at least, of a, an element of the progressive left in the Democratic Party that actually enjoys these moments. I want to see more of these moments. I think that this is good because it allows us to reclaim the conversation and hypes people up, sees that the Democratic Party is about substance, but we're also willing to push back in the conversation. We're, we're, we show strength and substance. Now, there's another clip I want to play. This is the second of three, in which uh, Pete Buttigieg has a conversation kind of related to this, at least on the subject of electric vehicles, uh, with another Republican congressman, Perry, okay? We'll watch it and unpack it together. This one's a bit longer. Not market forces. This is the government funding the destruction of our own automotive industry. And I hope you know that approximately two-thirds of EV owners make a So actually, as a matter of fact, I'm going to skip ahead a bit here because uh, he, he's basically making the case he's Perry's position is the federal government should not be providing subsidies to uh, manufacturers of electric vehicles. Okay, that's important for what happens next. You want the the government, you want my taxpayers to pay to cut the cost, which isn't cutting the if cost. You were of the view, respectfully, the cost. Congressman, Sir, if you were of all these that there factors, no combined, subsidy to propulsion all these vehicles, factors are you against oil and gas mean subsidies? that mean that for you every that EV oil and gas sold, sir, at a loss, that the cost of the as my, as my colleague on the other side, the gas guzzling pickup truck is higher now to pay for the loss as you kill your administration and you in particular kill the auto industry. And I'll remind you, in 2008, after a financial crisis, the federal government bailed out this industry. So while you're here today, will you commit and will you pledge to oppose any effort to bail out the auto industry after you force it into bankruptcy again? Will you do that today, sir? Congressman, I got started in politics. When I guess the answer is no. I yield the factory was at risk of being shut down because an elected official in my state tried to block the administration from saving Chrysler. I got involved and stood with the UAW to save those jobs, and I'll always be with auto jobs being preserved. So now there's more to this, and this is important because the next uh, the next uh, questioner is a Democrat, and she allows Secretary Buttigieg to answer his or to conclude his line of thought. But again, note how. Secretary Buttigieg continued to try to make the point. He allowed, he interrupted uh, the Republican who was interrupting him. And you may not have heard of what he said because the Republican's microphone was louder, but he's going to make the point again here in just a second. Oh. I Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Secretary, would you like to finish your statement? Sure, thank you. Uh, and I'll try to be as concise as I can. There are some people who I suppose believe there should be no subsidies for anything involving transportation. And I assume in the spirit of philosophical consistency, they would be against subsidizing oil and gas, as well as being against subsidizing Americans being able to afford an EV. There are others who believe that we should force Americans to be in the technology of the past forever. And then there's this administration which recognizes that the world is moving to EVs with or without us. And those EVs are either gonna be made by Chinese workers or they're gonna be made by American workers. And we respect the UAW standing up at the dawn of a new chapter in the automotive industry that created my hometown to make sure that those are not just American jobs, but good paying American jobs. Thank you, Mary. Brilliantly said. Okay. And again, note his tone of voice. Okay. He's not being shy about it. He's not being meek. He's just saying, listen, he's, he, he's effectively calling uh, Republican Congressman Perry a hypocrite. He's like, okay, listen, you oppose electric vehicle subsidies in... Uh, a market which is continuing to gain traction, which is the future of the planet. Does that mean you oppose federal subsidies for the fossil fuel industry? Which, of course, Perry doesn't. Republicans don't. They're very selective in what they choose to subsidize. This idea that, you know, Rick Perry was, or excuse me, Perry here was trying to appeal to, you know, laissez faire free market. He's like, let the market decide what happens with the electric vehicle industry versus the fossil fuel industry, except, of course, Republicans lie about this because they have consistently, decade after decade after decade after decade, continue to encourage and push for federal subsidies for industries, their pet industries, pet industries they like, including the fossil fuel industry. 
That's them leveraging the power of the government to intrude upon the free market. So Pete Buttigieg was pointing that out. Listen, against the future, it's either going to be developed in China or we could develop it here. We could have good paying American jobs or not, or we could force Americans to remain in, you know, an outmoded state of technology as the world moves forward. And again, he points out, you're being a hypocrite. Because if you really oppose, just on principle, subsidies towards the electric vehicle industry, then you should also oppose subsidies that go to the fossil fuel industry. And of course, uh, Perry has no answer for that. Now, the last clip I want to play is not so substantive in terms of policy issues like um, transportation or climate change. Now it addresses it's an attempt by a Republican to dunk on Pete Buttigieg for his personal travel habits. But Secretary Buttigieg was prepared. Secretary Buttigieg, um, since taking the role, you've traveled quite a bit, um, including private flights. Um, how often do you take private flights? Um, so I assume by private flights, you mean the use of government aircraft assigned to my agency. And uh, I knew this might come up, so I brought some numbers. Uh, since getting this job, I have taken 600, these are estimates, give or take a couple. Uh, but I've taken 638 flights. And, and uh, any of those commercial? Say, say about Any that? of those commercial? Uh, 607 of them were commercial. 10 of them were on military aircraft, such as Air Force One. And 21 of them were on FAA aircraft, representing about 3% of the flights. What was the... Do you see how this guy's already floundering? He's like, oh, I didn't expect you to have the facts with you. There was a Freedom of Information request made of your office to reveal the costs of the travel. Have you provided those costs? Uh, I'd have to check back with the office to see how the uh, on the traffic, but I can tell you that uh, yeah, we're going to complete. As I understand, with all it's FOIA been months, and, and you've not rec you've not provided the financial numbers for that travel. Okay, uh, again, I can check on the status of a FOIA you'll, request, but I can commit, also you'll commit to providing that information. We will always comply with FOIA, um, okay. but I appreciate the chance to discuss this because I can't help get the sense that some people want to make it sound mm -hmm. as if I yeah, don't Mr. travel Secretary. most of the time on commercial aircraft, which of course is untrue. Yeah, Mr. Secretary, I think... Again, note how when the Republican tries to reclaim the conversation, Pete Buttigieg, even though he has a lower microphone, even though he's not being a jerk, right? He's not insulting, he's not raising his voice. He just refuses to allow that particular person to reclaim the conversation until he has made his point. Love that energy. I think, um, I think the irony for most people in my district is that uh, they're being told that they're going to have to convert to electric vehicles to reduce their carbon footprint, and yet not everyone gets to travel the way that you do. Um, and Just so, once again, the way I usually travel is in economy class aboard an airliner like everybody else. Right. When we do it differently, it's often because it will save taxpayer I'm gonna, money. I want to get on I'm so to glad you asked this because I'm kind of excited Mr. to share some you know, of the Secretary details. Buttigieg Love it, folks. Love it. Okay, again, note the humor, note the faint condescension. I love it. I know a lot of people don't. I know a lot of people, the smug lefty stereotype, even though so many people on the right, particularly conservative commentators, are so effectively smug. Stephen Crowder is smug. Ben Shapiro is smug. Matt Walsh, Michael Knowles, etc. and so forth. So again, I don't know why. Le you know, Democrats or Democratic surrogates or left-leaning commentators apparently have to, you know, embody the very essence of humility. But the fact of the matter is, these people are outclassed by Pete Buttigieg. They'll never be able to win a debate with him. They'll never be able to get him on the facts. He is better than them. He's smarter than they are. He is better prepared than they are. And again, even at the very end, that, that very timid attempt by the Republican congressman, well, you're, you're trying to you know, make changes to protect the future habitability of the planet, which would require changes to the lives of every American citizen to one extent or another. Um, but they don't get to travel the way you do. And he's like, actually, no, I do travel 90, you know, six, 97% of the time, the exact same way that Americans would travel. But, but, but by the way, and I know some people will have issues with this, He's the Secretary of Transportation. This isn't an issue about somebody who's being wealthy or privileged. This is a high-level government, you know, functionary, right? A, a high-level government role. Of course, there are going to be some things in the capacity of his job that other normal, average citizens are simply not— we don't get Secret Service protection. We don't get a White House in which to live in. We know we don't get, uh, you know, the various— 
uh, situation, the various perks and assets afforded to government actors as they serve in their role. That's not an argument against making changes uh, to American life to reduce the effects of anthropogenic climate change. Now, the question is, is Pete Buttigieg using those perks responsibly in the capacity of his job? And based on the facts of which we are aware, the answer is yes. Now, if he were using his authority to, you know, take military aircraft to Hawaii for vacation or anything like that, then of course that would be a problem. Of course that would be a profound hypocrisy of which, you know, we would need to call out. But that's not what's happening, even though Republicans are attempting to spin it that way in bad faith. Sorry about that. I know that was a long video, but those were clips that I wanted to share. And again, I'm a day behind on some of this stuff. But anyway, great performance by Pete Buttigieg. More of this energy, please. Not just from, again, um, you know, left uh, commentators or Democratic surrogates in the media, but also from Democratic office holders. More of this energy, please.